What bra should I wear with a wide neck top? How thick should my belt be? How do I cover up my tummy? In this video, I'm answering your most common style questions. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to tackle your most common style questions. This is part two of a two-parter. You may have missed part one. It was a, uh, maybe like a year and a half ago to two years ago that I shot it where I answered your top 10 most common style questions. So in part two, we're gonna tackle more of those really common style questions that you guys ask, that you comment about, that you send emails about, that you comment on Instagram about, and hopefully get a lot of those answered. But if we don't, you can always ask more questions below in the comments and maybe we make a part three. By the way, this is the new studio. Welcome in our new home. Very excited. Mm, it's like my very own she cave, she shed. <laughs> there are a lot of questions to get to, so I don't wanna waste any time. Let's just go ahead and dive in. And question number one is, what style of bra should I wear with a wide V-neck top? So that's more of like a portrait neckline or a bateau neck or a boat neck, anything that sort of just skims the shoulders and falls right about here. What do you do? Because you don't necessarily want your bra straps to show, or do you? Mm. So you have options here. You can go with a strapless bra, which is kind of the go-to, I would say. I feel like I've tried so many different strapless bras, so here are three of my favorites. One is by Notori, another one is by Lively, and the other one is by Wacole. I think that my favorite is still the Wacole red carpet convertible strapless bra. The reason being is because with a strapless bra, one of my pet peeves is if the strapless bra top kind of sticks out and protrudes, and then you can see this whole like half moon shape just above your bust. The wake hole actually does the opposite. It's more like it juts in. It's more of a real rounded circle. So the edge of the bra cuts in, but just instead of like kind of laying straight or even jutting out, it really kind of curves inward. They all look like they curve inward, but they don't always sit flat or flush to your body. And so you kind of have to experiment a little bit to find the perfect strapless bra for you. It's one of those things that's really hard to find. They're never like absolutely perfect, but you just go with the best of the best for your body, for your bust. Your second option is a nipple cover, which literally just does what it says it's going to do, which is cover your nipple. So it's not gonna give you lift or support. There are some on Amazon, I featured them before in a style hack video, that have a sticky top that will lift a little bit. The problem with that is, is that the sticky top often shows in your boat neck top because it goes, it sits pretty high. That's why that solution isn't necessarily ideal. Nippies work really well if you just want that nipple coverage like I talked about. Another option is play around with a bralette or a pretty bra with pretty straps, like a Marie Jo bra with a really beautiful strap. You can do a bralette that has some dainty kind of double strap thing going on. You can even try a tank. I mean, there's nothing precluding you from playing around and experimenting a little bit. I just ordered this top from Nordstrom by Mage and it's an asymmetrical button down top. And I'm really excited to wear this top either plain or over like a tank top or a camisole. They even styled it on the website over a tank top. So I do think there are ways that you can kind of work around it. If you wanted to give it a little edge and just something a little bit different, try it with a bralette, try it with a tank. And and see what you think. Question number two is, I often, me, meaning me, mention that I do not dry clean my clothes. Do I make any exceptions? Pretty much no. I haven't dry cleaned anything in years. And you're like, wait, what? How is that possible? Well, I just spot clean things. I hand wash things. I wash in cold and lay flat to dry. If it's a really nice blazer, like my Bellman blazer, that is not going to the dry cleaners. Sorry, no way. If I feel like it's kind of a little bit getting a little stinky in the pits or something, which I mean TMI, but that happens, right? I'll just spot clean the area that I don't feel like is, is fresh. If I got something on the exterior of the blazer, I would literally like just try scraping at my fingernail first and see if that works. If that doesn't work, I might use just a tiny bit of gentle soap, like a woolite or something, and then again, use my fingernail. I don't scrub with any kind of sponge or anything like that. I feel like just your finger and your fingernail can do wonders. If it's 
it's a makeup stain, let's say on the collar of a white blazer or something like that, that's when I might try the gentle soap first. Then I might just spray a little bit of stain cleaner either on my hand, or on a cloth, and then gently just blot the stain and see if I can get it out that way. And again, just use my fingernail. I know, you're like, what, fingernails? Yep. That's what I do because if you use a cloth or a sponge or a scrubby, you risk the color of the sponge rubbing off. You risk just all kinds of weirdness happening. So I like to just use my hand and see if that will work. There are other things you can do to like kind of dry clean in the dryer to make things smell fresher. And we'll put a link to some ideas and suggestions below. The laundress has some great shampoos and different options for, for those of you who do want to do a lot of hand washing. Those are the shampoos that I bought. Here's the deal. When I've sent things to dry cleaners in the past, I've had everything happen from it coming back looking just like totally stripped of color. One time I sent my laundry to a dry cleaner slash laundry place and literally they, they told me that the dryer blew up or burned and like I lost all my clothes. Maybe it's a little like dry cleaner PTSD or something, but I do feel as though when you start dry cleaning things, it takes something away from the clothing, especially with those things that I invest a lot of money in. I'm just not taking the risk. I'm gonna spot treat it. I'm gonna try to clean it at home and I'm not gonna risk it at the dry cleaner. Next question is what is the best thickness for your belt. I would say the most kind of universally flattering is an inch and a quarter, 1.25 inches. That's gonna work on most of you, regardless of whether you have a short or long torso, which by the way, if you're not sure if you have a short or long torso, I did a whole video about that. There's a very simple little hand trick that you can try and we will put a link to that video below and right up here so you can watch that after this one if you wanted to. It's thin, but it's not too thin. It's thick enough where it makes an impact and I think it's a really good width. So if you're like, hmm, what's that one belt I should have in my wardrobe? Probably an inch and a quarter. And then I would say reversible. So one side is brown and the other side is black. Maybe for spring you want one side white and one side beige or something like that. But I think reversible belts give you more bang for your buck. The other thing that I like to do with belts, especially if I'm buying a really expensive designer belt, is I'll get a size 85, which then will fit around my hips and I can use my trusty leather punch to punch extra holes in the strap. So I can use it as either a waist belt or a hipster. And that way you get more mileage out of your belts as well. When you just buy the waist belt size, that's all you can use it for. But if you buy it a little bigger and you punch some holes in yourself or have this leather shop do it for you, then you have more versatility with that belt and it's gonna take you further. All of this to say that that you can wear whatever thickness you feel up for. If you wanna try one of those wide OB belts or one of the really big trendy wide thick belts, have at it. I have a utility belt by Elisabetta Franchi. I freaking love it. Play around, you know, have fun with belts. It is gonna be a little trickier for those of you who do have very little space between the bust and the waist. For those of you who have longer torsos, hmm, sky's the limit, go for it. The next question is about weight loss. So if you've lost some weight, you're not quite at your goal weight yet, but your old clothes don't fit you. So you're between sizes. So you're like, what should I do? Cause I don't want to invest a lot of money in all these new clothes. If I'm going to continue to lose weight, here's what I would do. Here's what I used to tell my clients. You need to dress the body that you have. That doesn't mean you go out and buy a whole new wardrobe for the size that is a very temporary size. You should just buy a few key pieces. And that's gonna depend on what you do and your lifestyle and what feels comfortable to you. Now, if it were me, I would buy an amazing pair of jeans, a fabulous blazer, and that would be probably about it that I would need in that transition. Because your blouses are probably gonna fit you regardless if they're a little bit roomy, or you're gonna find some blouses in your closet that are gonna fit you even with the weight loss. So I would just make sure you have a really tailored gorgeous blazer and also one or two amazing pairs of jeans. Now, if you work in an office, you're gonna to wanna to have a pair of trousers that are gonna fit you as well for this interim weight, but that's really about all you you need, I bet you can find the rest of what you would need in your closet. For example, you're going to be able to find at least one dress in your closet that fits your body. Now you're going to be able to find plenty of tops that fit your body. Now you're going to be able to find plenty of sweaters that fit your body. Now there are probably a bunch of jackets that fit your body now. So unless you've lost like a hundred pounds, then I think you only need a couple of key pieces to get you through until you've reached whatever your destination might be. If you're in that kind of limbo stage and you're feeling really bored and you're like, ah, just chomping at the bit 
it for something new and kind of to reward yourself for your hard work, but you're not ready to go all in with the clothing, get a couple of accessories, get some new shoes because those you can wear regardless of what your weight or your size is going to be. So get a fab new pair of shoes, get an amazing scarf, get a wonderful handbag. Like those are the things that you can buy to add some interest and excitement to your wardrobe during that interim period. This next question is very common and it is, I have a large bust and often look heavier. Any styling suggestions to look slimmer? Yeah, this is a tough one. So if you do have a large bust, there might be a tendency or an inclination to want to hide in voluminous clothing, peasant blouses, oversized blouses, but the key to make you still look streamlined and like you have a shape and a waist is to define the waist. And there are so many different ways that you can do that while not necessarily like clinging and making it all look too sexy. Cause I know there's also a consideration if you have a large bust, if you wear anything too fitted, you feel like it looks a little too sexy, right? Like you're crossing a line. So what you can do instead is you can look for design details under the bust. There are a lot of empire waist tops. There's ruching, there are wrap tops, V necklines, scoop necklines are the best for larger busts. You can wear a longer necklace, which will elongate the upper body. You can do a third layer like a blazer or a sweater to give you shape to create that waist definition, but also provide forgiveness in your tummy area. Another thing to think about if you are, let's just say more of an inverted triangle, you have a larger bust, maybe you have wider shoulders, you can create a portion and balance by wearing things with more volume on the bottom. So you could wear an A-line skirt. You could wear a full skirt. You could wear wide leg jeans or trousers. Like that will then create this kind of hourglass shape if that's what you're going after. Sometimes women who have larger busts or are wider in the shoulders, they have slimmer legs. And so that may be something that you wanna show off and wear tighter fitting bottoms, which is totally fine by the way. Just make sure that you do add some sort of waist definition so that you will look much slimmer and also just highlighting your beautiful shape. The next question is, you often show high waisted or high rise jeans, but I have a short torso. Here's the thing. Everybody has a different torso. Everybody has a different inseam length. That's the distance between your waist and your crotch. So for one of you, eight inches, nine inches might be high rise. That is a possibility. For others of you, it might be 14 inches, okay? I know people who have super long inseams where 14 inches is still like mid-rise on them. It just depends on your body shape. So if you have a really short torso and you have a short inseam, that short distance, then just wear something with a shorter inseam. Most of the time when you're shopping for jeans, or trousers, they will have kind of the fine print and you can look and see what is the length of the inseam. I tend to prefer inseam lengths of over nine inches. I have a couple that are 10 or 11 inches, <laughs> but you may prefer eight, which is really technically mid-rise. So just pay attention to the fine print, find the inseam that works best for you if you need to get out the tape measure and measure the distance between your waist and the bottom of your crotch, then do that. You'll have a much better gauge of what works for you, but you might know already just based on what's in your drawers, what's in your closet already. Another option is just to pull out your favorite pair of jeans from your closet or your drawer and then measure the inseam on those jeans if you don't already know what it is. And then you'll have a better sense of what your preferred inseam length looks like. Oh, the next question, the belly question. Ah, I have a bit of a belly and I don't think I can tuck in a top. Are there other ways to define my waist? I feel like we just kind of tackled this one, but we're gonna go into it a little bit more. I have done a couple of videos about dressing to kind of hide your tummy and we will put links to those below, but there are a lot of styling tricks and tips that you can use to slim the sides, to slim the tummy, to provide that tummy forgiveness that many of us want, especially after menopause, either perimenopause or menopause. I am now in full-blown menopause and one of the beautiful, <laughs> magical parts of menopause is, I don't know, like the weight just goes 
right here. And it ne for me, it never went there before. It's like it redisperses and it all goes right to the sides. In the back, like even, even the back now I have um, like, I don't know what you call it, back fat, I guess. I don't know what you call it in the back, but it's like love handles in the back. There are so many things that you can do just to create the illusion of a slimmer tummy and also provide forgiveness that you may be looking for if you're not feeling, you know, super confident. Which if you aren't, by the way, you are not alone. I have done a lot of videos about menopause and the weight gain in the tummy area specifically for me and what I've done to try and, you know, combat that. I'm back on the train trying to get rid of it again because I gained it back when I was in Europe. So I would suggest going and watching my video about my menopausal journey. There are a few of them and we will put links to those below in the description box and, and up here too. Particularly one about diet and exercise. I think that would probably be the most most powerful. I mean, it sucks, right? It just, it just kind of sucks. I'm trying not to put so much pressure on myself now and I'm trying to just be chill with it. Like it's okay, more of me to love. And I'm just trying to grant myself some grace and I'm seeing if this works a little bit better than trying to be so strict and regimented, which never really works for me because generally if I'm super strict and regimented, then I want to eat all the sugar and all the things that I'm not supposed, not supposed to be eating. So I got to try to play mind games with myself. We're getting back on track now. Woo <laughs> so to hide your tummy, several things that you can do. Again, we've done several videos about this, but essentially you want to look for ways to finding details. I love a wrap top with a V-neck. I love any kind of ruching that's going to highlight the tummy, but also provide forgiveness. One of my favorites is to wear a blouse that has some forgiveness and then put a jacket over it. Like I talked about before to create the definition and create the waist, but to slim the sides too. You can wear a long cardigan. That's a great look. A long line blazer. That's a fabulous fabulous look, slums the sides. Empire waist would be helpful. You can do a peplum top. You have a lot of options. Don't feel like there's nothing to wear. There are options for sure. This next question I think is really interesting and I happen to love it because I'm a huge hair fan. I love hair. Are there certain hairstyles that look better with different necklines? I think I know that your hairstyle is part of your whole overall style aesthetic. So if you're going out and you're wearing something very special, but your hair doesn't really go with the outfit, it can really kind of bring everything down. So you want to make sure that you keep it up by wearing a hairstyle that really feels like it matches and goes and works with what you're wearing. Generally speaking, when you wear something with a dramatic neckline or something that's really beautiful here across the chest and the shoulders, I would do something with your hair, either half up or all the way up. You could do pieces coming down, but I think that's a beautiful time to wear your hair up. If you're doing something, you know, like a black turtleneck and a beautiful bold statement necklace, that could be fine to do, just wear your hair down. You don't necessarily need to wear your hair up for that. If you're wearing a pair of fabulous earrings and you really want to show those off, wear your hair up. I think this is one of those areas where you can play around a little bit and experiment. One of the things that I love to do that I've talked about here before is you know, trying a hairstyle with your outfit, taking a picture in the mirror, and then looking back at your at your phone picture, maybe do one up and one down, and then compare and contrast and see which one you like better. Usually the photo provides a new perspective. And a lot of times if you're doing something kind of special, even date night, you wanna take pictures, take those pictures, take a look at them on your phone, and you'll know pretty instantly which one looks better. And if you're still not sure, we do have our Facebook group called The Hive with lots of bees who are ready to weigh in on your questions. The next question is about the current denim and trouser trends, which are these looser fitting, baggier jeans and pants. And it is, what can I wear with the looser denim if I don't want to wear tight tops. We're right back to where we were a minute ago with the belly and finding ways to define the waist and add shape that still provide the forgiveness. So it doesn't mean that you have to wear the super tight, skin tight bodysuit with those oversized jeans. So maybe you find a beautiful blouse that just skims the body. Maybe you go and you find a blouse like a new Alice and Olivia button down that I have that has a nice rounded hem. So you can leave it out. It still creates shape. It provides tummy forgiveness. It's not too long. It doesn't billow. It's tailored. You can wear a jacket again over a tee or camisole that will slim the sides and create the shape that you want. So you don't have to go with that formula of super tight top, 
baggy jeans or super tight bodysuit baggy jeans. You can play around a little bit with these body skimming silhouettes that still will create that shape and give you the definition that you want, but will be more forgiving and be more comfortable for you. One other thing you can try and play around with is the French or half tuck, which I've talked about before and I've demonstrated before here on the channel. It's just a tuck a little bit in the front. It's not a tuck all the way around. And sometimes we can get away with that. It just depends on where the weight is being carried. If it's a lower tummy, you probably can't do it. But if it's a higher tummy, you probably can. It could be a French tuck or half tuck on the side. It doesn't have to be directly in the middle. You can play around with it. And if the French or half tuck doesn't work for you, don't worry, go back to that rounded hem shirt like I just showed you. The last question is how to style a denim jacket. I know why this is so confusing because denim jackets by nature are very masculine, very utilitarian, almost military looking. They can be really hard to style. I've even been in this situation where I put on a denim jacket and I feel like mm, it's too masculine for this outfit. So what I have done is I bought a denim jacket that had feminine details. And I feel like that was the perfect combination for me. So I have have a retro fat denim jacket that has puff shoulders, beautiful collar, three quarter sleeve, and it's cropped. So it's very feminine, has these feminine details. I also love that it's cropped, so I can wear it with a maxi dress. I could wear it with a maxi skirt. Anytime you have something more masculine, like a denim jacket, when you pair it with something really feminine, it's such a beautiful contrast. So if you've got that like blouse and it has the pockets at the top and you feel like, oh, it's a little bit masculine and I don't feel very feminine or pretty or sexy in it, play around, like add a lace cami underneath and unbutton one of the buttons to show the lace cami peeping out to give it some femininity. With the denim jacket, pair it with a beautiful dress or skirt. Add the feminine touches. And then denim on denim is another question I get a lot of, and of course you can wear denim on denim. It can be so chic and cool. It definitely is trickier, but if you really wanna try it and you're not sure how to go about it, why not just try it with like a different colored denim. Like go with a light blue denim jacket and dark blue jeans, or blue denim jacket and white jeans, or blue denim jacket and black jeans. If you do wanna wear denim on denim in the traditional sense, like blue denim with blue denim, just break it up with some accessories, like add a waist spell, add some really colorful earrings, carry a pop of color with your handbag. That will help to, I think, just break it up a bit and make you feel more comfortable. Okay, so what other questions do you have? Between the last video and this video, did I cover them all? I don't know, I'm sure there's more, so please share those questions in the comments below. I also just wanted to share a really exciting new resource. We just released our 2022 capsule wardrobe, which is really beautiful and very thoughtfully curated. So if you're looking to add some really just foundational, basic, but amazing, impactful pieces, this would be a great resource. Just remember that you don't have to do the exact piece that we feature, it's just the general concept. And hopefully, the idea is you already have three quarters of these pieces in your closet already. Maybe every year you're adding one or two of these basic pieces to try and really build this beautiful, high quality, basic wardrobe, this foundational wardrobe that makes getting dressed every single day absolutely simple, seamless, effortless, that's really what we want, that zen kind of, oh, this is just so easy. I don't have to worry about whether this goes with this. It all just really mixes and matches together beautifully. That saves just so much time, so much energy, so much effort, and really to help you up and elevate your style game as well. Hopefully you take advantage of that resource. We'll put a link to the post below in the description box, and then we do have another resource that's for free when you sign up with our email newsletter. And we'll put a link to the email newsletter subscription in the description box below too. That's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.